Good morning, gentlemen. Today, I would take this opportunity to talk about the contribution of other arms or services like core of electronics and mechanical engineering towards the Cargill operation. This being the 25th year of Cargill operation, I thought it is appropriate to talk about humble contribution of our core of electronics and mechanical engineering. Before we talk, we work always behind the scene. You all behind the behind the scene, and uh, we are unseen but presented everywhere. So, uh, today I'll briefly talk about behind the scene contribution of core of electronic engineering in Cargill operation. Now, core of EME has evolved since uh, this early it was called ordnance department and this continued when all SCIS and we ultimately came back to core of EME and this is in cinema we have our holding today. 25 years ago, about 527 soldiers made supreme sacrifice while capturing the Cargill Heights, a mission impossible. A matter of pride for all of us in Indian and also as a part of Greek Indian Army, which I belong to. Due to geographical and geostatic compulsions, armed forces were not ordered to cross the line of control, forcing infantry assaults at heights of 15,000 to 17,000 feet with temperature ranging to even minus 60 degrees Celsius. The sacrifice and valor of soldiers and leaders will remain unmatched in military history who lived and fought for Nam, Namak and Nishan. Infantry heavily supported by regiment of artillery and air force really won the battle in such inhospitable terrain. Major General Jagdeep Singh writes, Direct shooting, particularly by the buffers, spelled terror amongst the defenders and had a devastating effect in the destruction of enemy bunkers. Of enemy bunkers. In July 1999, Deaton Colonel and later Lieutenant General Binod Vatia gave the first-hand feedback on the efficacy of infantry operation from 28 infantry units deployed in Kargil war. What was heartening was the self-belief and the morale of the soldiers and the complete trust in the leaders. The report also reinforced the nation's trust and confidence in the army and its soldiers. Now, was Kargil only infantry, artillery, or air force operation, which we all talk about it, and rightly so, they deserve it. I'm not denying it. Yes, infantry, artillery, air force got all the code for success, which they really deserve, because they faced the bullets. But the irony of any battle is that the appreciation of logistics, engineering support to modern sophisticated equipment, road clearance, communication, medical supply, chains, etc., so vital for war effort, fails to get the credit that it deserves. Yes, infantry fights and secures ground, but his effectiveness would get compromised if the rifles, motor, and communication system do not work. Buffers have been very effective in this operation, but what if some failed? Who ensured its reliability and availability back in the hands of troops as far forward as possible and as fast as possible? Pilots flew helicopters and were very effective in supply of food and evacuation. Who ensured its battleworthiness? I, being an EMU officer and having had first hand experience. Managing and ensuring engineering support to Northern Command under the dynamic leadership of Major General Anku Chandra can emphatically say that every commander do appreciate the effort of EME personnel as an individual and subunits, but do carry to EME as an organized leaves much to ponder about. In the glory of 2050 year of Cargill operation, EME could at best find a line or at best a small paragraph if some authors are have a big heart. Nowhere 
in either the history which has been written on Cargill, anyone talks about the contribution of others. Famous tooth-to-tail ratio doctrine has cut the tail of the supporting uh, supporting services to the extent it is without tail and is used as an unwanted spare part. With proliferation of technology, every soldier will have to be technical and every officer will have to be tech savvy or engineering graduate. Concept of being user and repairer do not go hand in hand. Our own strategy of short duration war akin to Bangladesh no more stands logically in view of ensuring Russia-Ukraine war, Israel, Hamas, and our own experience stand off with China. Now, just to show some of the uh, photographs during the operational operation, the defense minister with uh, uh, with uh, four of EMI personnel here. This is the famous equipment is being repaired in field condition. They are all repaired in the field condition. The helicopters are under maintenance. These two, there's a, electronic equipments are under repair by EMI personnel. There's again repair of uh, of uh, equipment here. So they are all various photographs showing the operation of the work which is done by the soldiers of Corps of Electronics and Mechanical Engineering. Here is the chief who has had interaction with the EMI personnel during the operation. Okay, now just to indicate uh, the resources around there, EMI battalion had put in five, EMI battalion was directly involved with the Vijay, Operation Vijay and four in support. Field workshop 40, advanced workshop debt with 12, repair debt 10, and special activities like you known. Simply, modification newly injected soap Leland required immediate no, it used to get hit in, over it. So in, uh, in consulting with OEM, 20 companies would have to change, otherwise war machinery would have come to be uh, to be quite to be quite affected. And this was which you brought taken six months' time. Four of EME personnel did it in 15 days' time, much before the operation, starting the operation. Even a new technique to repair solid tires before was so vital was implemented there. Magnitude effort, guns maintained 704 RT guns, including buffers, 130 MN, LFGs, pack motors, and all purchasing. Common sequence, 52 types, 21,713 missile launchers, four types, depth, 141, Fagot, Conkers, Milan, Flame, and all sorts of things. Battalion support weapons, BMPs and rotables. So this is how the effort was was in me personally. Now let's talk about uh, recovery. Aim and one of the duty of core EME to ensure uh, road clearance. Now, right from Pathan Court, right to the lay, we have got two access. One is Manali access and normal lay access, which are available. Both had to be cleared. And in clearing so, we had to establish what we call a recovery post. And this remained before the operation and after the operation also. Some of the activities that recover, you can see it yourself how important it is. There are some of those recovery operations are being done. This is all from the uh, from Cargill operation itself. Now, so that indicates the quantum of effort involved and the dedication of all EME personnel towards the war effort. Some word of appreciation for local commanders. It fell upon 612 and independent field workshop to shoulder the entire burden of providing repair and recovery cover from Jojila to Potula, a distance of approximately 200 kilometers. This was a massive task which the unit undertook took and sustained for nearly a month. Much of the work was un, uh, un, under enemy selling and they under withstood this fire as bravely and uncomplainingly uh, as the infant as the infantry did. I want to place on record 
Human Service Corps of EME doing Vijay of Vijay. The positive and immediate response provided at both the div and core level, especially during critical uh, period of, has been exceptional. This was Amar Paul. The EME person played a critical role to keep the guns going through critical period by some very innovative technique to maintain very high equipment state. My personal belief is that without the silent and unsung contribution of services, that we could not have achieved victory. It was heartening to hear from Lieutenant General Krishan Pal, PBSM, USM, BSM, and Bihar Geos Protein Corps, high praise for the efforts being put in by EME in ensuring a very high state of equipment availability. Well done, keep it up. Also, to convey my appreciation to all ranks under your command. This is General M.R. Kulchak, the then Director General of EME. Now, honors and awards, gentlemen, now, we have had six VRC Siena medal, mentioned dispenser C, Commander Chief Commander Scar 6, GOC Commander Scar 6, DGM position 26, MD position 30. Now, six people who lived their lives, whose name have been engraved in our War Memorial at one EME Center, second level. Okay. All EME officers on commission go for attachment to generally in front units to enhance availability for young officer in the unit. Officer put down batches and lanyards of that unit and even remain emotional and technically involved with the infantry battalion to which they are attached. If EME officer attached gets award, it goes to the credit of unit and not the EME, not the EME. Following officers, Captain Naveen uh, Nagappa, Sena Medal, Captain Suras, Lieutenant Siddharth Malik, Lieutenant Manjit Singh, Captain Prince Jose, Colonel Surendra Mohan Mehta, they all were rewarded during the operation. Now, Captain Naveen Nagap Nagappa has himself written, I was in grade 12 when I found myself fascinated by some NCC officers who came to visit my college. I was so amazed to see the pride for that uniform that I decided I wanted to have one for myself. I believed that instead of gazing at thousands of stars in the sky, I would rather have two placed on the, my shoulder. I studied mechanical engineering at Bapuji Institute of Engineering and Technology and around the same time got selected through the first round of service selection board for joining the defense forces. People around me weren't supportive of my decision and believed it wasn't wise to join defense services as I might not do well monetarily. However, I believed that earning a hundred salute when in the, in the army would make me feel wealthier than making a lot of money. I then got trained in the Indian Military Academy and was commissioned as Lieutenant uh, in 13th Battalion of JNK. The following years brought terror and brutality to the Kargil War. Without food and water, I fought courageously with other fellow soldiers at the line of control. As we were waiting to attack, one of the enemy soldiers threw a hand grenade towards our bunker. I quickly managed to throw the grenade back to the enemy, but unfortunately, it rolled back and exploded. Effect of this blast lasted for a minute, and I witnessed my entire life flash before me in those 60 seconds. I later realized that both my legs were severely injured, so much so that I would never be able to walk again. Captain Bikram Batra from my regiment came to my rescue and dragged me out of my out the bunker. We won the war, but at, at a cost. We had lost Captain Bikram Batra forever. I spent 21 months to undergo eight surgeries, but was still medically unfit to join the army back. Patriotism runs in my blood, and if not through my service in the army, I had to do something for my country. Accepting the reality of not being able to serve in the army on a positive note, I decided to give the UPSC exam. Today, I am superintendent engineer indirectly serving for the defense forces of my country, fulfilling my purpose in the best way, way I can. I am and I will always remain a proud Indian. Proud Indian.
That was from Batra. Now, briefly, what do you mean? Gentlemen, from 1943 to date, core of UME has moved from strength to strength, seeing saga of rich heritage, innovation, and technology excellence. With the proliferation of high technology and modernization, UME continued the odyssey of enhancing professionalism, assimilating technology, managing a new technology, providing intimate engine support, and field deploying the state of art equipment. A force reduction has led to high reliability and availability of equipment in the hands of troops unseen, unheard, even unrecognized, but dwelling, I must say, for 25 7, both in peace and war, including Kargil operations. Though earlier mentioned tasks are being achieved through UROs, unit repair organizing, LRW, and FRIs. They call first excellent repair and maintenance attached with the units. EME Battalion, Field Repair Workshop, Second National Repair and Maintenance, ensuring high reliability of all equipment. EME Battalion, Port and Workshop, Third National of Repair and a Specialized Repair Facilities. Advanced Base Workshop, Army Base Workshop are Fourth National Repair, undertaking equipment overhaul, spare part manufacture and a Specialized Equipment Manufacturer. State SIN Workshop, providing engine support, both repair and recovery to static units formation. They are now disbanded on recommendation of Sekatkar Committee. Then very important job recovery is being undertaken by recovery companies or recovery vehicles attached to the various EV units. Now, we'll talk about Sekatkar Committee next video. And uh, what I want to say that with the influx of technology, engine support to high technical requires especially trained manpower and specialized service, servicing tools and gadgets. EME persons are working behind the scene, providing intimate support to all equipment from binocular to small arms, guns, tanks, helicopter, as far as, as, far forward as possible. All EMC on commission are attached to the remain integral part of the infantry battalion so as to leave young age profile and increase availability options. Role is done by them is given to the unit concern. Challenges braved by all ranks of army are multifaceted and diverse. And rightly, we call ourselves soldier craftsmen. The dedication and sincerity of task has earned the core of a core many accolades, but larger part of effort and accomplishment remains unacknowledged. unacknowledged. Now, having to what this gentleman uh, I would be talking about uh, one important aspect of contribution of uh, station workshops and contribution of army base workshop towards war, war effort and our contribution during operation, the Kargil operation itself in my next video. My aim was only to bring out the work being done behind the scene by the services like ours, Core of Electronic Mechanical Engineering, who have been working tirelessly towards any effort. It may be peace, it may be war. Jai Hind. Thank you.